Hi. Um, game finished just now. Japan nil, Brazil four. Um, so to begin with, Japan's starting lineup included uh, two changes. First of all, Uchida started at right back, and second of all, Honda started at the top of the formation in place of Mike Harbinar. So to read off just the list, Kawashima in goal, defence, Yoshida Kono, Nagatomo Uchida, uh, central midfield, Endo Hasebe, attacking midfield line, uh, Kagawa, Nakamura and Kiyotake, and Honda as a, kind of a false nine, false number nine. Um, yeah, it's been a long time since I think any of us have seen Japan get whooped like that. Um, so, let's get started. First, at the beginning, Japan started fairly positively, and Brazil were also very dangerous on like the counter attack and so on. But um, and I think Japan uh, Honda had the first chance of the game, or the first real chance of the game. Um, but then uh, just like that, I think Uchida Uchida had a poor header um, from a goal kick, and then. Quick counter attack, 1 0 Brazil from a strike from Paulinho. Very nice hit, by the way. You wouldn't see many teams do that. Um, many players do that first time. Um, but, you know, Japan kept playing, and at, at 1 0 and even at 2 0, Japan were looking like they weren't really out of their depth so much. Um, but the thing is that about this game was that. Japan, I've said this in a number of videos, and everybody who watches the team will realize this is that Japan's biggest weakness def defensively seems to be on the counter attack, and there's um, very few teams that do that better than Brazil. Um, if any, really. Um, I wouldn't think there's any. Anyhow, Germany might do, I don't know. But anyway, Kagawa had a big chance, um, but was called offside. Paulinho had another massive chance, which he should have scored, but um, it just went wide of the post. And then it was a fairly harsh decision. Connor, I think it might have been for handball or something, but uh, Connor got had a, PK, a penalty kick against him, and Neymar converted. So then all of a sudden it's 2-0 fairly early in the first half. Um, Japan kept playing their normal game. Which that was probably one of the few really encouraging things was that they, until until really late in the game, maybe four nil, they were they were always still trying to create chances along the ground. They were passing out of the back the whole game, and um, I think it's good that they didn't resort to the long the the long ball. And I feel like they might have done had Mike Harvener been in there because that's certainly what happened against France. So. Anyway, but the real the real thing was that the few times they lost the ball in midfield, they were really punished on the counter attack. Brazil just sort of pounced it, pounced on it, and went. Um, and I think it's really good that Japan had this game, um, even though it kind of sucks right now. But see, these little mistakes, like Uchida's poor header or um, Inui Inui late in the second half, a few times. But anyway, all of these little mistakes, they Japan, it's not like they only did them today. They usually do them, like have one or two or three of those kinds of passes go astray. But it's just that the teams that um, in sort of World Cup qualifying in Asia aren't going to, aren't capable of punishing on those mistakes. Whereas the teams at the very highest level that Japan aspired to um, beat one day um, certainly can. So... So yeah, it was all those, it was those little balls that uh, Brazil pounced on. I mean, I think in the first half, um, it was probably the possession. I wouldn't be surprised if Japan had a bit more possession, just because Brazil were quite comfortable um, absorbing a little bit of pressure, and then as soon as they got the ball, they just go. So um, yeah, that's what I found was the main difference when Japan. Uh, won the ball. They, their first, the first thing they would do is really um, 
establish possession, really. And uh, really establish it, sort of get in a safe area and find the options, really. Whereas Brazil, once they um, got the ball off Japan, they sort of just went. And then, and all of a sudden, we're on the back foot, and, um, and the defence had a very hard time with that. Because, um, and as we've seen before, um, Japan's central midfielders don't drop back quickly enough um, when they're defending a counter. And often that's often because they're committed too far forward when they're attacking. So, yeah. Um, I think at halftime the shot count was about 4 Japan, 7 Brazil. So, you know, Japan weren't looking too horrible in the first half. Really, I was I was so I was fairly satisfied with it, although I was a bit concerned about those chances. But very early to start the second half, and Japan scored a goal. Oh no, sorry, Brazil scored a goal, which really annoyed me because it was so avoidable. It was just a corner kick to the back post. Um, Nagatomo uh, was nowhere near his his man, and um, and that was truly his fault. So, um, and then I think it was deflected shot, but that really doesn't matter. It was very poor defending, and 3-0. So, and then shortly after that, Kagawa missed a sitter. Um, well, no, I don't, don't know if it was a sitter, but it was a very big chance. And then Honda had a very big penalty shout turned down by the ref. Um, which I think, I think the goal and those two chances sort of, broke Japan a little bit um because from then on they looked very sluggish and poor and they just and it, mm, didn't really look like they were going toe to toe with Brazil it was more <coughs> they were looking certainly a class or two below and then it got to 4-0 so really that kind of sums up the game well, it started it started brightly but I think is and then just got quite sluggish towards the end really and I, towards the end I was just a bit bored and hoping it didn't get to 5-0 <coughs> um, in fact from 3-0 I was hoping it wouldn't get to 4-0 so which it did so out of this game I think um, it would be very easy for Zaccaroni to brush it off and say okay well you know it was Brazil um, <coughs> we're not going to see that kind of opposition for a long time and I hope he I hope he doesn't think that way because a, a lot of their chances were all counterattacks, and that's sort of a tactical thing that can be um, potentially fixed, or at least sort of strengthened. You know what I mean? Because they concede these kinds of chances from time to time against you know teams like Uzbekistan as well. <coughs> um, second of all, the issue of who should play at the top of the formation, and indeed. Um, central attacking midfield. I didn't think um, Nakamura was too bad actually in the first half. This is a more technical game than the France France game where he got a bit sort of out muscled a little bit. But Nakamura was decent. Um, unfortunately, Roichi Maeda is out was out of this game as well, so we didn't have our starting striker. Um, and last of all, I. Th I think, I think, I would say, when Hiroki Sakai came on, our right side of defense certainly got weaker, and he looked a little, he looked quite out of his depth um, <coughs> against Brazil. So, you know, considering that, I think Uchida should be starting right back if you compare the two halves of football, or well, not two halves, but you know. Uh, it was two halves, that's right. Um, yeah, because Uchida was first half, Sakai was second. Um, yeah, there's not really a whole lot more to say. So, uh, next match is in about a month's time. Uh, 14th of November. <coughs> away to Oman. Um, Japan could... Probably not mathematically, but essentially that could seal qualification there, and that would be preferable. Um, there's also, I think it's still a bit early, but there's also a little bit been a bit of scuttle, scuttlebutt about a, a friendly with the Netherlands in 
I think it was next February. So that could be something to look forward to. <coughs> but other than that possibility, the next time Japan plays opposition of this caliber will be in the Brazil 2013 Confederations Cup. So, yeah, um, disappointing but good experience and I hope Zach takes it all on board. Leave your thoughts below and um, I'll see you in about a month.